Mars, our neighboring world in the solar system, has captivated humanity for centuries due to its proximity to Earth and its eerie, reddish glow in the night sky. As the fourth planet from the Sun, it's about half the size of Earth, with a thin atmosphere mostly composed of carbon dioxide and surface temperatures that can plummet to minus 195 degrees Fahrenheit at the poles. Early astronomers peering through telescopes in the 19th century were quick to draw fanciful conclusions about the red planet. Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli, in 1877, observed what he called canali, straight lines on the surface that he believed were channels. This term was mistranslated into English as canals, sparking wild speculation. American astronomer Percival Lowell went further, proposing that these were artificial waterways built by an intelligent Martian civilization to irrigate their dying world. For decades, popular imagination ran wild with ideas of Martian life, fueled by science fiction like H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. But as technology advanced, these illusions began to fade. What appeared as canals were optical illusions caused by the limitations of early telescopes. And the changing colors on Mars' surface were due to massive dust storms that sweep across the planet, redistributing its iron-rich soil and giving it seasonal variations in appearance. Yet, Mars continued to intrigue scientists. It wasn't just a barren rock. Orbital observations hinted at polar ice caps, vast canyons, and enormous volcanoes like Olympus Mons, the tallest mountain in the solar system, towering over 13 miles high. The planet's two small moons, Phobos and Deimos, added to the mystery, possibly captured asteroids from the distant past. These early glimpses set the stage for the space age, when humanity would send robotic explorers to uncover the truth. Over the decades, Mars has proven to be a harsh and deceptive world, but our persistence has revealed secrets about its ancient history, potential for past life, and even resources that could support future human endeavors. Let's dive into the timeline of Mars exploration, from the pioneering failures and triumphs of the Cold War era to the cutting edge missions of today, and see what we've truly discovered on this enigmatic planet. The most intense push to conquer Mars came during the 1970s, at the height of the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. In 1971, the USSR launched two ambitious probes, Mars 2 and Mars 3. These spacecraft embarked on a grueling journey of over six months, covering more than 200 million miles through the void of space. Their goal was to become the first human-made objects to softly land on another planet. Mars, too, met a tragic end, entering the Martian atmosphere at too steep an angle and crashing into the surface amid a raging dust storm that blanketed the planet. Mars 3 fared better, at least initially. It used an aerodynamic cone to shield itself during descent, slowing down through atmospheric friction. At supersonic speeds, a small pilot parachute deployed, followed by the main chute once the velocity dropped to subsonic levels. The lander touched down successfully in the southern hemisphere, but communication was short-lived. Just 14.5 seconds after landing, the signal cut out, likely due to the dust storm interfering with transmission or the orbiter moving out of range. Despite the brevity, Mars 3 beamed back the first ever image from the Martian surface, a grainy, featureless panorama that revealed a rocky, desolate landscape. This partial success marked a milestone, proving that landing on Mars was possible, even if sustaining operations was a monumental challenge. The Americans soon followed with greater success. In 1975, NASA's Viking 1 and Viking 2 missions became the first to fully achieve soft landings and transmit detailed data from Mars. Launched in the summer of that year, each Viking consisted of an orbiter and a lander. Viking 1 touched down on July 20, 1976, in Christ Planitia, 
a vast plain in the northern hemisphere, followed by Viking 2 in Utopia Planitius six weeks later. Within 30 minutes of landing, Viking 1 sent back the first clear black and white photos, showing a boulder-strewn field under a pinkish sky. A day later, the first color images arrived, depicting rusty red soil and scattered rocks, with a hazy atmosphere that scattered sunlight in ways unlike Earth's. The landers were equipped with sophisticated instruments, cameras for panoramic views, seismometers to detect Mars quakes, though few were recorded, and biology experiments to search for signs of life. They scooped up soil samples and tested for microbial activity, but the results were inconclusive. Some suggested possible metabolic processes, while others pointed to chemical reactions from the harsh environment. The orbiters, meanwhile, provided even more value. Circling Mars for years, they mapped over 97% of the surface in unprecedented detail, revealing features like the massive V.S. Marineris Canyon system, four times deeper than the Grand Canyon and stretching longer than the United States is wide. These maps, with resolutions down to 100 meters, are still referenced today for planning missions. Viking 1's lander operated until 1982, sending back over 52,000 images and weather data, showing daily temperature swings and seasonal dust storms. Together, the Vikings confirmed Mars as a cold, dry world with a history of geological activity, but no definitive evidence of current life. The 1990s brought a new era with the introduction of rovers, mobile explorers that could traverse the terrain. NASA's Mars Pathfinder mission in 1997 delivered the first rover, Sojourner, named after abolitionist Sojourner Truth. Unlike previous landers, Pathfinder used an innovative airbag system for touchdown. The craft bounced across the surface like a giant beach ball, cushioning impacts before deflating to release the rover. Landing in Ares Vallis, an ancient floodplain, on July 4th, 1997, Sojourner, a six-wheeled vehicle the size of a microwave, rolled off its ramp two days later. It captured the first 360-degree panorama from Mars, showing a rocky outpost with distant hills. Over its 83-day mission, far exceeding the planned seven days, Sojourner analyzed rocks with an Alpha Proton X-ray spectrometer determining their composition and revealing volcanic origins. It also monitored weather, recording gusty winds up to 20 miles per hour and temperatures from minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit. The rover's solar panels and rechargeable batteries allowed it to operate independently, but cold nights eventually drained its power, likely freezing its electronics. Pathfinder's success demonstrated that low-cost, high-impact missions could work, paving the way for more ambitious rovers. Building on this, NASA launched the Mars Exploration Rover Program in 2003, sending twin Spirit and Opportunity to opposite sides of the planet. Spirit landed in Guzov Crater on January 4, 2004, a site thought to be an ancient lake bed while Opportunity touched down in Meridiani Planum three weeks later. Both used the airbag bounce method and were designed for 90 Martian days souls of operation, but they shattered expectations. Equipped with panoramic cameras, spectrometers, and rock abrasion tools, they hunted for evidence of past water. Spirit discovered signs of hydrothermal activity including silica-rich deposits indicative of hot springs, environments on Earth teeming with life. It operated until 2010, when it got stuck in soft sand and couldn't recharge its solar panels during winter, leading to its death from the cold after traveling 4.8 miles. Opportunity, nicknamed Oppy, was a legend. It found hematite blueberries, spherules formed in watery conditions, and explored Endurance Crater, revealing layered sediments from ancient seas. 
Despite challenges like a jammed robotic arm in 2007 and memory issues fixed by software updates in 2014, Oppie roamed for over 14 years, covering a marathon distance of 28 miles by its end in 2018. A massive dust storm that year blocked sunlight, preventing recharging, and NASA declared it lost after 5,111 souls. These rovers confirmed that Mars once had abundant liquid water, reshaping our understanding of its habitable past. The 2010s escalated the hunt for life with Curiosity, part of the Mars Science Laboratory mission. Landing in Gale Crater on August 6, 2012, via a revolutionary sky crane system, where rockets lowered the rover gently to the surface. Curiosity is the size of a small car powered by a nuclear radioisotope thermoelectric generator for longevity. Its suite of 10 instruments includes lasers to vaporize rocks for analysis, drills to sample interiors, and cameras for stunning selfies. Curiosity's primary goal, assess if Mars ever supported microbial life. Climbing Mount Sharp, a three-mile-high mound in the crater, it found complex organic molecules in 2014, carbon-based building blocks of life, not contaminated from Earth. Further discoveries included methane spikes in the atmosphere, possibly from geological or biological sources, and evidence of ancient rivers and lakes that persisted for millions of years. As of 2025, Curiosity remains active, having driven over 20 miles and celebrating its 13th year with upgraded AI for autonomous navigation, allowing it to avoid hazards and select targets efficiently. Its findings suggest Mars was once warmer and wetter, with conditions suitable for life billions of years ago. Recent missions have built on this legacy. In 2021, NASA's Perseverance rover landed in Jezero Crater, an ancient river delta, with the Ingenuity helicopter, the first powered flight on another world. Perseverance has collected over 30 rock cores for future return to Earth via the Mars Sample Return Mission, planned for the 2030s. It detected organic compounds and mapped subsurface water ice. China's Tianwen, one orbiter and Zhurong rover, also in 2021, explored Utopia Planitia, finding evidence of recent water activity. The European Space Agency's Mars Express, orbiting since 2003, continues to detect subsurface lakes of liquid water beneath the South Pole using radar. As of August 2025, these probes are revealing Mars dynamic geology, with Mars quakes detected by NASA's InSight lander which ended in 2022, showing a molten core. Human footsteps on Mars remain a dream, with NASA's Artemis program aiming for the 2030s in private ventures, like SpaceX's Starship accelerating timelines. Proposals for colonization include domed habitats, extracting water from ice, and even terraforming by releasing greenhouse gases to thicken the atmosphere. We hope this deep dive into Mars exploration has sparked your curiosity. Give it a thumbs up if it did. Stay tuned for our next episode on colonizing Mars. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to catch it.